Welcome to Slasher Sunday. So tonight I'm going to knock out the remake of House on Sorority Row. Sorority Row. Um, I had asked you guys if you wanted to see me cover this and you said yes. So I was like, all right, I didn't really have anything else lined up. So why not? So this movie starts off, obviously, spoilers from here on out. Um, but before I get into spoilers, I haven't seen this movie since it came out, I would say. And it's okay. I mean, I like things about it. I dislike things about it. We'll get into it as it goes along. But nothing I'm crazy about. But there were some cool changes. And as I said, we'll, we'll get into it. All right, let's go. So we got this opening scene where this girl is like screaming and running out of the house and you think it's going to be this normal opening of a horror movie where the killer's chasing after somebody, whatever. And of course it's a fake out scream. Uh, this girl's being chased because a guy took off her shirt, which I don't know if he like pushed her out or I don't know why she's running out of the house when she's demanding her shirt back when he's behind her, but whatever. So she's running out. What I really liked about the opening here is that they went for the one long take tracking shot that's moving through the party, past these guys, past this and that. Now, even though you can tell where the cuts are, that there is a cut, it's like a four minute scene, I wanna say, and it does look fairly seamless. Yes, they move, they do some tricky angles so that it can cut and move into the next thing. So it is an all one shot, unless somebody can prove me otherwise, and it just so happened to look like it was cut in places where it got dark kind of when they were going through halls. It's not one take. I would be very surprised if it was. But I always do like when they do that. Um, I remember watching like Silent House, uh, the remake with Elizabeth Olsen. And even though I knew there was cuts somewhere, I know that there was like, I can't remember how many cuts there are in the film because the film is made to look like it's all done in one take. It was still super impressive. Just doing that at all on a higher budget film like this is, is tough. So I liked the ambition of it and I thought it was pretty cool. You got to see a bunch of half naked hot chicks jumping around on trampolines and throwing shit at each other. Yeah, sign me up. This movie has some boobs in it and they're nice and all and I'm not saying they're not, but I don't know. Films like this, there's, there's films where I just watch and there's so many hot chicks and and it's a slasher flick and they're in a sorority house. It, it calls for it. I feel like there could be so much more boobage in this movie for the budget that they have, the amazing amount of hot women they have on staff. <laughs> I just, I think that we could have got some more boobage for our buck, but you know, whatever. Um, and Carrie freaking Fisher, Princess Leia herself is in here. Um, playing Mrs. Crenshaw, and this time she's a wholly different house mother. It, it was like, oh wow, this is completely different. They went a, a much, much different direction with this. As far as like the whole remake angle goes, I mean, it's sorority sisters covering up a murder. That's about all this shares. That's, that's it. It's a prank gone wrong. So... Yeah, I mean, I guess you, you didn't need to call this a sorority row. I think that's just sold it more. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it borrows very little. But I like that. I don't want to watch the same fucking movie again. So good. I'm glad that they went a different, a different route. Now, as far as the prank goes in this, I had my issues with the prank before because of a lot of reasons. I went into it. If you want to hear my thoughts on that, you know, go over and watch that video. Uh, but as far as this prank goes, I, <laughs> okay, so their friend's boyfriend cheats on her, and so they decide they're going to play some massive prank on this guy to get back at him. So they convince him to give this girl what he thinks is Rufalin and to fuck her while she's sleeping. As soon as he agrees to that, and you have video footage of him fucking a girl who's asleep, I'm pretty sure you got back at him enough. That's enough right there. He's going to fucking jail. Anyone who would agree to that, what? Then, 
They go out, they take this fucking girl after he thinks she's dead, convince him that she's dead, and then get him to agree to discard her body by dismembering and chopping up the body and throwing it down a fucking abandoned mine shaft, and he's okay with that as well. Pranks over, okay? And the fact they leave this guy alone with her body as they go to look for sharp rocks to cut off her limbs and arms. Get the fuck out of here. You, why would you leave that guy? That guy is so untrustworthy. And here's the thing. This film, I never know what to make of this film as far as its tone. Because a lot of the times... I feel like it's trying to be straightforward and serious, but there's a lot of misplaced humor. It's fine that there's humor in it. I have no problem with humor, but it's the way the humor is presented in the movie that makes me question pretty much everything. Because the blonde girl in this movie, I can't think of what her name is, like, but like the main chick, the main, uh, you know, uh, house sister or whatever... Uh, the one who gets the fucking knife through the throat at the end. Uh, she makes so many unbelievably inappropriate jokes throughout the film that just are s unbelievable, to say the least. And she's always making jokes that are just like, no one would say that. And if they did, no one would hang around them. It's just, it's too much. It, it's fine if it's, a, it's if it's like a parody type film. But the film plays so straight-laced at time, and most of the time, that I, I just can't take it seriously. I got a couple chuckles out of it because it's just so ridiculous, um, especially at the end. But this whole prank, it just... Where does it end? When do you think... Like, they're making jokes about this in the car. And they're even making jokes when she's getting raped. You know, she's like... And, and I get it because they're playing this prank on him... But is that really a prank? Like, <laughs> that's one fucking hell of a prank. Oh, man. Let's see if your bo your ex-boyfriend is a rapist. Oh, well. Uh, and then we'll even push it further than that. It's, it's, it's a little much. Um, and then he does kill her. And then they decide we really are going to hide the bodies. And then that's where problem number two comes into play. Pretty much every person in this movie is deplorable. Just awful. <laughs> and you just want every fucking person, pretty much, to die in the film. Except for the main girl who they're trying to make it seem like she's the one who doesn't want to do this and that. And it's like... They, okay, I should say they do frame her. They And how she's even able to hang out with these girls. I would have switched schools... I would have left. I would have fucking done anything. But she's still like buddy-buddy with these guys. After they take her jacket, put it on him, and say, we'll frame you for the fucking murder. Wow. Really? Like, that's just craziness to me. That this... <laughs> that they would continue to even hang out. Um, yeah, anyway. Um... And one of the girls is even like, I'm not going to let my little brother go to jail over this. It's like, your little brother who was just raping your friend? <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm actually having a really hard time keeping all the characters straight. Because they're like, you know, these freaking um, college co-ed girls. And they all blend to this look alike to me. All them damn white girls look the same to me. No. Seriously though, I, I like I'm thinking of all the chicks, all the main chicks in this movie and I'm like confusing all of their parts even though I literally just freaking finished watching the movie like 1 minute ago. I literally pressed play like fucking 45 seconds after this film ended. <laughs> I walked down record, didn't think I don't care. But yeah, these girls are all blending in my head to me. But they're all fucking just d despicable people. Um, and so then we cut, you know, to like a year later and, uh, they all are, you know, I don't know where they're at because this girl, oh, what's her damn name in the movie? Like fucking some nickname. <laughs> no, 
Bits. What the fuck was her name? Oh, it doesn't matter. Um, but she's like trying to screw this freshman guy and he's like, you taste like vomit. And then she opens her legs and is like, I'm getting real cold down there. I need you to warm it up, which I'm guessing she's meaning to like eat her out. I mean, I, I would take that as like, you want me to fuck you. Right. And I mean, you're in college and this is what you want to do. Right. I mean, this guy, <laughs> I, I thought that that scene was really funny because she's like, you know, tasting like vomit and she's like I I ate a mint you're good and I'm getting cold down there and then he's like I don't know I'm kind of getting grossed out and she's like all right whatever it's not my fucking fault you're gay <laughs> I I really did like her I, I could have used some more of her in the movie because her humor actually landed for me it actually worked for the film um, the other chick just didn't um, anyway um, then they're all given their little speech and everyone claps and the girls are like snap clapping. Is that like the, is that like the proper way to do it? Is that what you learn in like finishing school? Is that like the golf pat for fucking sorority girls? I... Snap clap? This... The clapper? Um, and <laughs> like just the fact that they let their friend be missing. Like, oh my God, it's one thing to kill your friend and cover it up and whatever and let the parents like find the body and, and grieve and this and that. But like having, having your kid die, now I've never experienced either, obviously. So I'm really just speaking from a place of what I would think would be the truth. But from what I can tell, just looking at the situation and analyzing it, finding out your kid is dead is not as bad is thinking your kid is missing because you have no idea and that oh my god that's the worst thing you could ever have happen to you is not know what happened to your kid that's just i don't think i can't think of literally anything worse so just the fact that they're they let her family not know what happened to her as they know she's dead oh man that that right there i don't care i don't care what is going on here they all need to die so you're just kind of waiting for all of them to die throughout the flick from that point on um all the frat boys in this is instantly you just want dead um do they actually deserve to die i don't know i i don't care it's a film so yes for film's sake yes die unbelievable um the tire iron as the killer you know weapon uh i dig it it's kind of like a Swiss Army knife <laughs> for a killer. Yeah. Um, I don't really know why it needs to be. I, like, seeing as how it is a Swiss Army knife, I don't feel like that's properly utilized. Like, if you're going to have four different tools on your weapon, make them all serve some purpose and then get creative with that purpose. Have something on the end of it that that kill could only happen because you have that end. So you got to use one of your four tools available on the thing. And since it's the weapon that was used to kill her, you know, I get why it's used. It's a cool idea. I like it, but it was just a bunch of stabby things that he used in stabby ways. You know, it wasn't all that interesting, but it could have been. Multi-use tool should have multi-uses. He has to like tie a string to it at the end, not a string, but like a cable or something and throw it at this girl and then pull it back, throw it at this girl so he could turn it into like a makeshift boomerang of sorts. And it's just, I don't know, there could have been multiple uses for the thing. And I just thought that they kind of failed in that way. So an interesting idea, but not properly utilized from what I saw. Um, and the shrink, oh my god, as I said, everybody in this movie is just horrendous. This shrink makes young 20-something-year-old girls, this guy's at least in his 50s or, or higher, and if you're a 50-year-old guy and you want to fuck a 20-year-old girl and she's consenting and, and all is well and, and it's under, you know, normal presences, fine, that's nothing wrong with that, but to force your patient who's coming to you for help to fuck you to get her medication is 
it's up there. It's up there. It's in like the top five sins. <laughs> like that is about as fucked up as you could possibly be. So, wow. No. Jesus Christ. This guy, you're just like, kill this guy. Please kill this guy. And I'm genuine on that. Like a guy who would do that, death is the only cure. Oh my good God. Um, let's see. Oh, bottle kill. Down the throat. Yeah, it's a promiscuous girl and she's deep throating something. So I, I, I kind of get maybe what the joke is to be. It's, it's funny, but the kill's awesome, man. He jams it down her throat, jams it down her throat, and just keeps hitting it, keeps hitting it, and then stabs her and the blood comes up through the bottle. I think really quick, make sure. Uh, yeah, best kill in the movie. I, I don't think, unless I amend that here in a second, but I don't think there's a better kill. No, that was a good kill. And that was like the first real kill you get to see in the movie outside of the, you know, the first girl and then the doctor, psychologist. But that one's kind of weak too. He just kind of throws it. Not a big deal. Uh, But the bottle, boom, just shoves it down like three different times. Her mouth just keeps opening. And then like the liquid's pouring down into her throat. Oh, it's gnarly. It's a great one. Really, really good kill. That one alone is worth... uh, you know, mentioning this movie. So it's got a very memorable kill. I'll give it that. Um, Meeting the politician dad. You want that guy fucking dead? (laughs) Um, And and it plays into the movie later, which I thought I liked the idea of the politician's son. I know that it probably wouldn't have been enough, but I like it. Like the dad is so hard up on, on who his daughter is able to date and any negativity towards his campaign in any way, this guy finds out about it, and he has to kill everyone involved. And it, you know, it makes sense when you, the reveal happens of who the killer is, and then it just becomes this overly convoluted nonsense when the boyfriend is actually the killer. Because we already got a good enough explanation that I was like, okay, he's killing him because of the political campaign and and the stresses of having a father like that. And we met the guy earlier. It works. The fact that he's killing and the other guy is killing as well. Like, I get it. I I can assume that he sent him the pictures. So then he saw him and was going to cover it up. So he was trying to keep it quiet, what he was given and whatnot. But regardless... How many people are driven to murder to cut, you know, to cover something up or protect a family member? Any, the fact, the odds of two guys hanging out in the same general vicinity with the same group of people, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I get it. It's a movie and all this shit, but it's too much. Like, you got your killer. I'm fine with it being the politician's son. Then they throw the next guy on and you're like, Come on, they're not even partners. That's like, if it was like a scream scenario where it was, you know, it was Billy and his friend and whatever. Okay, Stu, right? I'm not a big scream fan, you guys know that. Uh, but I think that's right, Billy and Stu. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, like that makes sense because they're, you know, together. This guy isn't, unless I missed that line. I, I was kind of writing and rolling my eyes a fuckload, so I didn't hear every single word, but I, I don't think they are. Um... That poor girl who overhears him in the shower. The fact that he was around to kill her it is that's another one of those things where it's like it's just a movie, but it's like, get the fuck out of here. He just so happened to overhear them talking about it, knowing that there was another girl hiding, overhearing them, and had to kill her to keep her quiet. That's just ridiculous. But as I said, it, it's a film, and, and that's kind of stuff you have to look past. Um, but because we're on it, and because that's what I do, I got to point it out. Um, laundry shoot kill, meh. It was okay. I, it would have been better if he was like jumping through and trying to escape, and the guy threw the freaking you know little tire iron thing, and it stuck in there. And it like hit him as he was sliding down and we got to watch him slide down the thing and cut himself open. And then he would have got stuck and his innards would have fallen down and went out the bottom of the chute. See, you need to hire me as a consultant for kills. Okay, these fucking idiots got nothing. The, the bottle kill was good, but 
pretty much everything else in the movie is just generic. Um, so you could have got creative. You could have got creative. They had the setup. It was a cool setup. When I saw it, I was like, ah, that would have been cool. You want to see a great laundry shoot moment, watch Halloween 5. I don't really have a lot great to say about that movie. I like some of it. I really don't like some of it. But that freaking laundry shoot scene is, is one of the more effective um, scares or, or chase sequences in the Halloween franchise. And the, the uncut version where he actually stabs her in the leg and explains why she's bleeding uh, when she gets out of there is gnarly. Stabbing a kid like that. It's great. Should have kept it in the movie. Um, all right, back to fucking sorority row. Yeah, where the hell am I? I'm all over the place. Um, they find the body of this guy in the shoot. And this is what I'm saying. This is where the movie just gets so ridiculous. The blonde chick yet again is, and some other girls with her. Just barely react. They're just like, you know, making jokes. Not a big deal. Like, just found a fucking dude dead. You know, a friend that we know. Get out of here. <laughs> kind of reminds me of, like, Black Christmas a little bit. Or uh, it kind of has vibes of, like, I know what you did last summer. Or it's just silly. It's, it's a silly fucking movie that tries to be serious as well. I think it's still kind of a product of Scream, even though this is way after. It just still kind of feels like that. Um, anyway. Um, so they go down, they try to check the mine shaft, they hit that guy with the car, and then she gets out and makes a joke about hitting him with the car. This chick is just ridiculous. Um, and he's dead, so they think he's the killer, and they kill him. And there's so many red herrings that, you know, get killed in this. Um, then they send this girl down in the mine shaft, and they use just a mirror to, to try to look down there for light as she's like descending down to who knows where and how. Yeah, yeah, right. And then it breaks and she falls down in there. Oh my God. That would be terrifying. Um, and I like the bubbles. I thought that was kind of cool. You know, they pour all the bubbles in the machine. It breaks. It overheats and it makes the whole bubbles instead of fog and, you know, stereotypical stuff that they usually would use. I like the... The bubbles is an idea. It was cool. You know, uh, just uh, blocks your vision. Um, the Theta Pi must die written down in the well. I don't really know how that plays into the film now. Like now knowing who the killer was and whatnot. I mean, we find out that the boyfriend did it and he was trying to cover up the fact that the murders were done by Theta Pi, so why would he go down there and write that? Did She was dead, okay? That chick was fucking dead. So to say that she, like, took it and wrote that before she died, no way. Completely dark down there, too, and she's writing in the dark, Theta Pi. I'm like, get out of here, no way. So whoever went down there and got her body, which is the boyfriend, went down there, got her body, wrote Theta Pi Must Die, for no reason at all, because as I said, he would be linking them to the killing and then takes the body out of there and puts it in there. I, I guess he was staging the murder. He was trying to make it look like she came back from the dead to kill them. Uh, I guess that would be it. Yeah. And then he's going to put the body in there. Did he explain this? <laughs> I, I don't think he did, but shit, man. Oh, man. When I, when I start to lose interest in a movie, I really stop listening to certain phrases and stuff. That might be terrible for a review, but I'm just kind of hashing it out right here. Um, and flare in the mouth kill was okay. Her face is all bubbling and boiling. I thought that was kind of cool looking for a second. Uh, not shown enough. Uh, Miss Crenshaw, Carrie Fisher, comes in with a shotgun and just starts blowing you know, shots into the walls and going crazy. She hits one of the girls in the face with a shotgun. And she's like, you've been, you know, you've been uh, deserving of that or whatever. You've been asking for that for a while. And then the girl fesses up to uh, killing this girl. And she's like, what? I was just talking about you wrecking my house. You're a house mother that's been there forever. Girls have wrecked your house probably many, many, many times. Your response is to hit them in the face with the back 
butt end of a shotgun? Really? Because they make it seem like it's going to be her. Then they make it seem like it's going to be the sister. Then they make it think... Like, so yeah, there's a lot of red herrings. But hitting him in the face with a shotgun for... Right, get the fuck out of here. I, I say get the fuck out of here a lot now, but it's ridiculous. Um, And... Although, I, I guess she maybe was scared and hit her and then was like, well, I hit you. So, you know, you deserved it anyways for wrecking my house. <laughs> I guess maybe that's what happened. I don't know. Um, and yeah, like, as I said, the blonde girl, she finds the corpse of her dead friend and she's like, she looks terrible. And then she thinks her boyfriend's the killer. So she's like, I'm beginning to think he's not dating material. Those lines need to die. Theta Pi doesn't need to die. Those fucking jokes need to die. Um, and then, yeah, we find out the boyfriend did it for love. And then he says, are you with me? And she's like, yes. Now, I think this might be a smart play on her path. Like I always say, like, just fake it, you know? Make him think you're with him. And then when he's got his back turned, stab him to death. Whatever. But she's like, I'm with you. And then when he's like, oh, let's get a freaking Ellie. She's like, whoa, why Ellie? I'm with you on everything else, but not Ellie. So she really was with him on everything else. He made a good point. He was like, these are all pieces of shit. And I was sitting here agreeing with him. But I'm like, really? Like, Ellie? That's it? That's your line? Like, everyone else can die, but this girl, it needs to live? She's the one good person, right? I, I get what she's coming from, but was she really going to go off with this guy? I don't know what to make of that. Maybe? So, so if he wouldn't have said Ellie, I guess they would have just ran off into the sunset together and, and that would have been that. They probably would have got caught, but you know what I mean? Like, wow, okay, she's just like, all right, you did it for love, I'm with you. Let's just, uh, you know, go get hitched. Let's elope. Um, and then the whole end sequence, of course, we have a fire burning in a house and an enclosed area, no smoke, none. Why? 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 It's so ridiculous. It just annoys me. Anyway, yeah, no smoke. Gets the killer down. Doesn't do anything about it. Twice. Ooh. He's throwing the thing. They knock him down. He goes, he falls into the fire. Then they get all three of the girls. And then they have this like music video slow motion ending where they walk out of the house burning behind them and they just get a close up on their fucking like dirty, sweaty cleavage, just selling sex at every moment. Fine. They should have just had him walk out completely nude. <laughs> that would have fucking knocked up the film a point. Um, but yeah, it was funny. I was just all super hard cleavage. Great. Oh my God. All these girls were gorgeous. Um, and then, yeah. And then it cuts to this like 15 months, 15 weeks. I don't know how long, much longer later. 15 something, 15 months, I think. And, uh, yeah, it might be the most pointless and dumbest fucking like end credit like right before the credits like sequel possibility thing I've ever seen it's the sister being like theta pi says goodbye or whatever and then there's a bunch of gardeners out front and one of them has like a trowel or like a fucking just like a little hand shovel or whatever and it, he just like turns it a little bit and it makes like a shink so I, and then it just goes to the credits is that a gardener or is that another killer? There's another killer? There's, he's a gardener? He's the garden killer? Like, what the fuck was that? Am I supposed to think that's somebody? I, I Get out of here. Stop with the fucking, like, the endings of, like, sequel possibility or it's not all over. The nightmare isn't over. It's so stupid. Anyway, I'm over it. The film was okay. It had some good kills. It had some hot chicks. It had some great tits in shots and whatever. But some of the dialogue was horrible. The fucking characters were all detestable. I couldn't really relate to or like anybody in the film. It's not a bad film. I think when people were like, oh, it's a fun one. You should check it out. Yeah, it was okay. It was a fun one to talk about. Um, but... Overall, not something I'm going to rush back to, probably ever. All right, guys.